The political climate in the U.S. right now is really bad for the radical left and very dangerous for us as well. Not only are we facing the state repression that we've been so used to, we're also facing increasing threats from the right, whether that is alt-right trolls and doxing and live streamers at protests and rallies outing people to be targeted online, or it's ultra-violent and murderous actions, such as in Portland most recently. There's also the threats from the police who are working very clearly and very blatantly like with the far right in order to target radical left organizers and activists. So I think we're at a time right now where the stakes are really high for people. There is really widespread resistance, not only to the Trump administration, but to a rise in white supremacist organizing and fascism across the country. There's a lot of resistance that's going Going on to police murder, police violence, also to extraction projects. And so I think as resistance is growing, the repression that's coming from the government is increasing as well. Since the election, there have been hundreds of new felony defendants across the country, ranging from everything that's happening over at Standing Rock to the inauguration in, in D.C., May Day, in different places, there are a good number of felony arrests as well. When people are arrested in political situations, it seems to be that the charges are becoming much higher than a lot of us are used to, with J-20 being a really good example of that. On January 20th, 2017, during an anti-capitalist, anti-fascist march in Washington, D.C. Over 200 people, myself included, were assaulted with chemical weapons, surrounded and trapped using a technique known as kettling, and arrested. We were all charged with one count of felony rioting, which later became eight or more felonies, including engaging in a riot, inciting a riot, conspiracy to riot, and several counts of property damage. The sum of these charges carries a maximum sentence of 75 years in prison. To put this clearly, we are facing the rest of our lives behind bars for going to a protest. Conspiracy charges are one of the prosecutor's favorite tools because they're basically a thought crime. So it's a way of the prosecutors to put blanket charges on people and make them all responsible for actions that maybe only one person took. Basically, they're saying that 200 people were equally responsible for breaking a handful of windows. We see conspiracy charges being used to really brutally affect in the so-called war on terror, which is mostly targeted against like Arab Muslims here in the US. We see a lot of conspiracy charges in the so-called war on drugs, targeted against both inner city populations as well as a lot of rural populations. Mass arrests and prosecution is nothing new. What sets our legal cases apart is that the state has charged so many protesters with so many serious felonies. This is the first political arrest of the Trump presidency. This case is about giving the government more power to criminalize and shut down protests. Initially, it was just answering questions about knowing your rights and advising people about risks and consequences of actions. And when we had our first mass arrest, then it became a much more intense situation. Over the course of a year, there were over 800 people who were arrested with really varying levels of charges. Early on, it was things Things like criminal trespass, you know, as people were going to work sites and attempting to disrupt the work that was happening on the pipeline itself. And as those months dragged on, as more and more people were getting arrested, the charges then increased quite a bit. One of the things that the special prosecutor, Lad Erickson, has said in a motion, he writes, there's no relevance to any testimony or evidence regarding historical treaty, tribal sovereignty, the merits of the Dakota Access Pipeline, climate change, sacred sites, corporate power, corporate media, or any other social or political cause. Meaning he is attempting to discredit the resistance efforts of the water protectors and the merits of the power of prayer and the responsibility to protect our first medicine, our water. There's also seven people who are facing federal charges, Red Fawn Fallis being one of them, who is facing upwards of 25 years in federal prison. And she's currently still being held in custody pretrial, so she'll be waiting trial while still in the custody of the U.S. Marshals up there in North Dakota. There's also six other people who are facing federal charges, and all of those people are facing the same charges of civil disorder 
and use of fire in its civil disorder. So these people are facing up to 15 years in federal prison. All seven of those people are indigenous water protectors. While the people who are facing state charges come from a wide array of identities, it seems that the federal repression matrix is really centered on indigenous people, their resistance, and their assertion of their own sovereignty over their lands and their waters. Due process is not going to be delivered to these water protectors by the way the trials have been set up. There is a continuing grand jury that was convened to investigate the activities of water protectors. They've been used historically as a means of political repression, as a way of shutting down resistance, of starting to tear communities apart by spreading paranoia, suspicion, getting people to self-isolate. One of the most clear wins that we have in regards to the movement defense work that's happening at Standing Rock is around this grand jury. We found out about the grand jury. We very quickly organized, not only with the person who had been subpoenaed, but also spreading within the same day information and resources throughout the camp. And then also put together a month-long tour to reach water protectors across the country as well. The U.S. Attorney's Office, the FBI, the ATF, the JTTF, and other federal law enforcement bodies had a really clear vision of how that grand jury process was going to unfold for them. And I think that we fucked it up for them, and I think we did a really good job of it.